Conference. It's Lakota East and Princeton. We'll get you get started with the game of the week next on Chatterbox Live. Sharonville, I'm Jeff Kim, Trace Fowler that joined me in just a moment. The beat rolls on for the Thunderhawks, winning their eighth in a row last Tuesday, blowing out Fairfield 66-34. Hayden Furman led all scores with 17 points. Meanwhile, the Vikings got 13 from Bowen Hartman en route to an easy 64-42 victory over Sycamore. They've won four of their last five. So as we bring in Trace, let's start with these Vikings. They have four players averaging double figures in scoring per game this year, and they're going to need every bit of it to overcome this stifling Thunderhawks defense. That they will. They've been, they're getting hot at the right time, though. You know, they started off the year, they had a new coach, they had a lot of expectations coming in, a lot of players that are very talented, and that's going to stand out as the night progresses, right? And everyone just expected them to be at the top, and they started off slow. They lost, you know, I think maybe their first three almost – they're one out of three in the in the league to start the first four games, and everybody kind of wrote them off for there for a little, for a little while. They're storming back, and what I mean playing at the right time, there's no better time to play good basketball than in February and March when it means the most. That's this time, and we'll see if uh, they can overcome a very good East team, although, as we uh, just found out, it will be not as quite of the daunting East. Well, hit that in just a second. Meanwhile, it's business as usual for Clint Adkins' squad. They ramp up for another playoff run. They were 20-6 and six and 15-1 and one in conference last year, making their fourth-round bid in the playoffs. This year, they might be even better. 17-2, and 12-1 and one in the GMC, ranked 10th in the States. Yeah, I mean, they're a good basketball team. And it's not just Nate Johnson. And, and, and you could go through the list, right? You got Mangold and you got McCorkle and you got Howard. And I know I'm missing guys. It's just they're, they're a solid bunch. And in order to beat them, you're going to have to play your best. And uh, it's, it's, they don't have many off nights because of the way the style of basketball they play. Um, it's very fundamental. They're going to they're gonna run through screens a whole, a whole heck of a lot when they're on offense. And they're going to basically test your will on the defensive end. So we'll find out, like I said before, um, if they're up for the challenge and, you know, as uh, as we'll get into it, we'll see whether or not, you know, uh, the hurdle that they'll have to overcome is going to be maybe too big. Well, and that hurdle is, we might as well <laughs> mention it now. We might as well. Nate Johnson is out tonight. Yeah. He is uh, sick. Uh, he is not dressed for the game. He will not start. Obviously, he will not even suit up. So it's going to be a defensive effort, and we're going to have to see some Young players really step up to the fore. We've seen a lot of Alex Mangold down the stretch, sure. and we expect that he'll uh, be a scoring presence here tonight. The last time these two teams met, it was on December 6, 2019, in a game you saw right here on Chatterbox Live. That's right. Nate Johnson poured in a career-high 34 points and had eight rebounds in that game. East beat Princeton at Liberty Township. 59-49. We expect this game will be a little closer tonight. Yeah, especially without with, with, with the absence of Nate Johnson, who, in my opinion, uh, you can look at the statistics, you can break everything down. I like him a, a, as maybe the best player in the GMC and maybe even the area. It just He brings a lot to the table, right? He's not just a scorer. He's not just a rebounder. He's not just a guy that can pass. He's a guy that can do it all. Uh, a little bit of a glue guy, and we'll see if they miss him. But as you mentioned, that score earlier in the year, I think, was indicative of just a little bit of sloppy play on Princeton's part. I'll be shocked or surprised if the score doesn't doesn't escalate a little bit tonight. And I think the Vikings are playing good basketball, and I, I really expect them to put their best foot forward at a place they haven't lost all year long. So they are undefeated here in the home gym in the Princeton confines. Viking Village, as we like to call <laughs> it. So we'll take a break right here. When we come back, Trace and I will have the starting lineups in the opening tip-off. This is the Game of the Week here on Chatterbox Live. We're just mere moments away from the start of this one here at Viking Village at Princeton High School. Along with Trace Fowler, I'm Jeff Kim. Thanks for joining us. It's the Game of the Week here on Chatterbox Live. Let's give you the starting lineups here in this one. First for Visiting Lakota East, the Thunderhawks are 17-2, and 12-1 in the GMC. Their head coach is Clint Adkins in his sixth year at the helm, 109-36, and 76-17 and in the GMC. Three guards set tonight. Number one, Trevor Howard, 5'11", senior. Number three, Jared McCorkle, 6'1", senior. And number five, Jaden Cole, 6'2", a sophomore. 
Up front, it'll be number 15, Caden Furman, six foot three, a senior, and the man in the middle, the pivot, will be number 11, Alex Mangold, six foot seven, a senior. For the Princeton Vikings, they're 14 and five, nine and four in the GMC. Their head coach in his first year, Steve Green, 14 and five, nine and four in conference. Three guards set for him tonight. Number two, Khalil Davis, six foot one, a senior. Number three, Diarius Randall, six foot one, a senior. And number four, Greg Johnson, six foot three, a junior. Up front, it'll be number 15, Bowen Hardman, six foot five, a sophomore. And number 20, Sterling Burkhalter, six foot two, a senior. And again, it bears mentioning Trace. No Nate Johnson tonight, and uh, many of us are crestfallen. Yeah. Uh, just the fact that he is sick and you know, we're deprived of seeing a, a great talent who uh, is going to play at the Division One level when he finishes high school career. Certainly. I, I, I'm glad to hear, though, it is a illness, right? Because that's something that you expect them to bounce back from and be able to play here as they head into the postseason. Uh, Darius Randall was in a walking boot last week, and it scared, scared me to death to a certain extent just based off the idea that, you know, he... <laughs> He's a great player, and I, I, it, 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 he's a senior, and it, sting, it would sting me if he was not able to finish his career in which the way that he should. So as, the, as we had talked about before, though, before we jumped off air, this is a team that has a loss at home. And, you know, whether that's the, the home atmosphere or whether it's just the familiarity, Coach Green, I don't know if you've seen last week, had mentioned he thinks they have an advantage here based off the depth perception. Sometimes it takes teams to, a little bit of time to get used to the depth perception because right, their hoops are kind of extended off the court. I don't know what it is, but otherwise, uh, they'll take it. Well, and, and this is really pronounced here. As you get a look at the overhead view uh, on your shot right now, it is a really a depth perception type game. In fact, as we're looking at it from that side, from that uh, that hoop, you have a little crevice area where you have a, a mini built-in stands there. That's hard to recognize from a depth perception if you're shooting that way. Yeah, I mean, I, maybe it's just because I was a relative shooter when I was in high school. <laughs> I, I never had found the depth perception thing to be that big of a deal. I think when you go out to warm-ups, your first two or three shots might feel a little funny, but these guys have had long enough time to shoot on these types of hoops. And to be quite frank, you go around the GMC, there's other other arenas, if you will, whether it's Fairfield or Hamilton or the Masons, and I'm sure I'm missing some, that have that mid Middletown and that have that little bit of view. I just think they're a good basketball team at the end of the day, and Steve Green was trying to be nice maybe and, and didn't want to say that. I think that has more to do with it than the, than the depth perception, but I digress. And I don't know if he still has the interim tag. I mean, he came in for Steve Wright, who had departed back in September. He became the video coordinator with uh, Cleveland State. He also went and played for the Vikings, if you will. Absolutely. Uh, but, uh, yeah, but uh, you, know, uh, Steve, you know, in this case, Steve Green, a great job in leading his team right now third or tied for third in the GMC. So the home team, Princeton, clad in the home whites. They are in the red numerals and trim. It's the black uniforms and the silver numerals for visiting Lakota East. Alex Mangold, the jump center with Sterling Burkhalter, tap controlled by East, and away we go here at Princeton as we go left to right. Furman up high. Trevor Howard gets his first touch and now there throws is, it away. Randall. Stolen away by Randall. Going for Hardman, 2 nothing. Good steal by, by Randall, and he knew he had Hardman. He just was patient with it and Tossed up a little mini alley-oop, if you will, and Hardman with an easy basket early. Averaging 13 a ball game. Their first blood, the first lead by the home team, the Vikings. They throw it into the big man, Mangold. He draws the double, skip pass. Furman drums it down low, and it goes to McCorkle. Now Howard, top of the key. Plays. It's Coles for three. He knocks it down. That's what East does so well, really. East is just, they run offense. They're going to run you through screens, and... Eventually, it's going to wear on you, and you get a good look there, and Coles knocks it down. First lead change of the ball game in a minute gone by here in this first quarter. Three to two. So back the other way on a score, and it's 4-3 now in favor of the Vikings. Second lead change of the ball game. Good drive. Here's a drive and a finish. Furman with his first bucket, averaging 11 a ball game, 5-4. So back and forth we go. There's Davis. 
And he that. knocks it down. Let's play. Let's play, Jeff. Putting the ball through the hoop early here. Well, unlike what we've seen in previous games, where one team comes out to a decided lead and the other team has to play catch-up, we're seeing back-and-forth basketball. Already four lead changes in this contest. McCorkle plays. Howard, and now something off the ball. Going to be going the other way. So it's an offensive foul against visiting East. And it came down in the paint area. Yeah, one good thing when you run an offense with a lot of screens, it can be difficult to defend. The bad part is, is when you set a lot of screens, it opens up the opportunity to set an illegal one, <laughs> which is what happened right there. And Princeton uh, is on their way back down. And this is the man that, that really is a game changer for them sometimes. Darius Randall, he's just so quick. And he's able to get by his man, which then in turn leads to an open shot for somebody else. And Ball nearly thrown away, saved on the sideline by Johnson. Johnson to the elbow and now plays it back outside. Burkholter and back over for Hardman. Top of the key, feeds inside, throws it away. Good feed. Up ahead, Furman to the rack. Good bucket by Furman, but McCorkle did a good job of giving to him at the right time to allow him to have space to be able to go up for an easy lay-in. We're tied at seven, our first tie of the contest with 5.15 left to go here in quarter number one. Randall disdains the shot, drives, puts it up, no good, draws some contact. Looks like they're going to get Howard on that one. That's the team's second foul of this first quarter. I like that. You like that from Dearest Randall? You see that? <laughs> you don't see too many guys go behind and back on a free throw, but I'm not mad about it. Randall at the line, he got the first. And he gets them both. 82% at the line. Well, maybe, you know, when you have something that's working for you, <laughs> yeah. it doesn't matter what it looks like, right? Yeah, you do whatever you want as long as it goes in. Nine to seven. The feet inside, Mangold on Burke Halter, and now sends it back outside. Coles. McCorkle out on the wing. It's hard to tell whether that ball got knocked out or if he passed it out. Here's Mangold once again up high on the right. Now plays Furman, the jumper, no good. Mangold the rebound, mm. and it's kicked and played out to Princeton. There's here Princeton. And here we go with Khalil Davis to the rack. See what well, that's what Princeton does really well. Just get the ball out and transition and get an easy lay in and a lot of that comes from your defense. If you're able to get stops, those are the types of possessions you might, not might be able to get. We come up on the halfway point of this first quarter, 11-7. Furman, top of the key, around the Mangold screen. Sets a screen for Howard, now plays back McCorkle. Drives, pumps, scores. A little too easy there for the Vikings, a little too easy. That's just a straight line drive by McCorkle and went up with a fundamental two-handed lay-in. Jared averaging about three and a half a ball game. Here's a three, knock it down. Greg Johnson with the trifecta. He's been hot. Johnson averaging about six points a ball game. He makes it 14 to nine. This is the biggest lead of the ball game. Mangold outside the elbow, and they keep it around the perimeter. We saw a similar start for Princeton when we saw them back in week two against these very same Thunderhawks. Mangold draws the double down on the block and now kicks it out. Oh, they throw it back inside. McCorkle has it picked away. Good pass, but look at him, man, I tell you. Randall, he goes to Khalil up. Davis. Is that a goaltend? Yes, it is. So Davis will get credit for the bucket. And a quick moving first quarter with 3.06 to play, 16-9. to So the quick pace right now favoring the home team. Yeah, and I mean, they took Randall out, and I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure why, because he's been playing incredibly, incredibly well. I mean, that play was pretty much just him making an off-look off, off pass, which led to a bucket, and we'll see if East can't capitalize on him being out of the game. Cole stuck at the elbow, back outside McCorkle. Nathan Adkins into the game. They throw it down low. Furman on the fadeaway from 10, no good. 
And the rebound to Jaheim Thomas into this ball game. Six foot four senior. Hardman, top of the key, stuck coming around left to right. Davis looking, step back, pump straight on. He missed the shot, and the ball caroms out of bounds, and it belongs to the Lakota East with 2.20 left to go in the quarter. I'm just going to mention that I felt like if there's any weakness of the Vikings, it's that right there. It's their offensive set sometimes. I think that they get just a little a little too impatient. They pass the ball around a few times. They don't really run any offense, and, and they take a, a contested shot that you probably could get any time. The opposite could be said, though, when they get in transition. There's nobody better when they got guys running. High low for Furman. He scores. On the assist by Big Al. Alex Mangold. There you go. We'll see if Princeton can't find a little bit of offense here. Hardman, stop and go. All six foot five of them. A bolt of silk, no good. Mangold the rebound. High low intended for Mangold, taken away by Jaheim Thomas. He plays up front. Caleb Crawford has the ball, top of the key, penetrating to the rack. He goes, shots no good. He drew the contact. They get a charge or they gonna call a block? Does it look like a charge? Yep. They are gonna call an offensive foul, and it looked like he uh, he was set up in that lane for quite some time. As a coach once said to a uh, to a referee, "How could you make a block call when he was growing roots in the lane, man?" <laughs> <laughs> well, but hey, he called an offensive foul, so I agree with him, and we'll see. Like I said, since Randall came out, East is on a tear. Mangold has it, top of the key. Adkins gets a touch. Coles down low on the left. Trying nice to move. one run. Nice baseline twist. Moves it up. No good. The rebound. Again, Jaheim Thomas. Almost seemed like he did a little double clutch to Coles, and I didn't think he needed to do that, but we'll see if uh, we'll see if Princely can't find a little bit of offense and get a little easier basket. The last two times down, they've just taken some tough, tough shots. Jamal Walker into this ball game between the rings. He gets a high screen from Thomas. Crawford out on the sideline, goes to the elbow, cuts into the lanes, goes to the rack, missed the shot, Adkins the rebound. As we come up on 30 seconds to play and here in quarter number one. 16 to 11. Looks like East might, might, might be content with taking the last shot if they don't get a five second call. Mangold gets a touch, top of the key. Under 15 to play. Coles back outside. Howard now back to Mangold. Five on the game clock. Back inside. Now outside. Mangold has a step back. A corner three. It's no good. And the rebound down to the sophomore Hardman. And this first quarter has come to a close. Your score after one period, 16 to 11 in favor of the Vikings. This is the game of the week here on Chatterbox Live. to 11 here for our game of the week Princeton with a five-point lead over the top dog in the GMC Lakota East along with Trace Fowler I'm Jeff Kim thanks for joining us for the game of the week here on Chatterbox Live Lakota East playing a little shorthanded tonight no Nate Johnson and uh, you know when you're losing 16 points a ball game or on some nights and if you think back to week two here against these very same Vikings 34 points that's a lot of buckets to lose yeah I I said it once, I'll say it again. I, I think he brings more to the table than just putting the ball in the basket. Not that you're saying that by any means. I just think that he's a glue guy. And similar similar to what Darius Randall, in my opinion, was for the first quarter for the Vikings, that's what Nate Johnson is a lot of times for the Thunderhawks. But he's not here, and uh, he'll be back. So no harm, no foul as Randall is back in the game here. He has it, and they send it around the arc. Davis with a jab step, driving baseline, has his shot misdirected out of bounds by Adkins. So as we had mentioned, Johnson, 16.7 points a ball game, tied for third in the conference in scoring. Behind Julian Mackey and Trey Robinson. They play it back up on high for Caleb Crawford. 
A little stop and go against Adkins. Tosses near side to the wing. Randall returns it up high. Davis now plays it over for Walker. Okay. Jamal plays it back on for Crawford. Driving, kicking. A lot of drives and kicks. That it is, and I'm okay with that. You know, you haven't taken a bad shot so far, and without a shot clock in high school, there's no reason not to take a bad one. Randall pumps 10 feet away. Kid can play. Tell you what, we did a little bit of a chatterbox pick em. Don't know if you've seen that. Yes, in I the did. Office. We were having a little fun. And if I said I made a mistake, I'm going to tell you I made a mistake. Look at Mangold down the middle oh, there. Oh, down the lane he went in scoring. But point being is that Darius Randall asked the simple question to us. He just wants to know who picked first. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, he should have he should have gone a little quicker than he did. Here's a jumper of the elbow from Khalil Davis. It's no good. 18-13 is your score. Well, obviously when you were all making picks... As we have the elbow jumper by Coles, no good. Mangle the rebound, and he drew the contact. So Alex is going to have to play a little bigger tonight, knowing yes. that uh, the other man that plays big uh, down that area in Nate Johnson's out of the lineup. Yeah, we'll see if we'll see if Mango can't get, a, get, a, get can't get it going a little earlier. Well, he's been a little bit of everything tonight: an assist, rebounds, a score, and here's Coles with a bucket. Well, impromptu screen from Mangold right there. It didn't mean to be that, but... Jaden Coles has five. Back to a three-point contest with 6.18 left to play here in this first half. Here's a three off the corner. Partially blocked as Davis misfires, and here comes East. Coles just a sophomore. He's a really impressive player. Adkins between the rings. Coles has it up high on the right. We'll dribble back outside. Howard has it. And now it goes to Caden Furman. Out to the corner for Howard. Back to Furman. This type of game right now definitely plays into the East hands. Here's Howard for three. He knocks it down and ties it up. Yeah, anytime you get in a half court type of a, of a contest, East is going to win this battle. It's, it's, Princeton's going to have to force tempo and try to get transition buckets, in my opinion, similar to what they did in the first quarter. Second tie of the contest. We're knotted up at 18. Crawford has it in isolation. Jaheim Thomas puts it on the deck, spins around Mangold, fires it up, and a pretty shot from 10 feet away. Yeah, that's getting your own basket when you need it right there. Jaheim gets his first bucket, averaging four contest, 20 to 18. Two three zone set, they pull it out wide. One thing to keep in mind here as we watch, looks like they're going to get a turnover, but. I'll get to it on the next possession. Thomas playing it. Crawford kicks, and they'll reset. Oh, here's a three off the left wing. No good for Randall. Just short, but what I meant to say there was got to be careful because East likes to let Mangold set screens there in their half court, and if you don't talk, we've seen how that turned there's out. There's Atkins for three. That's no good. One and done on that possession. Randall the rebound. Here come the Vikings up by two. Davis pumps, kicks, fires, three, shot no good for Jamal Walker. And Coach Atkins was not too pleased because I do think that there was an offensive foul there to be had, but they didn't call it. Let him play and on to the next possession. Mangold sets the high screen for Coles, driving in on Thomas, stuck, and now kicks it back out. Atkins. He walked. He walked with it. Yes, he did. Looks like we got some wholesale subs there for Princeton, but one of those situations there down low, they had Mangold on the block. I'd like to see them be a little more patient and try to feed that ball into him. He has a size advantage tonight, and not only a size advantage, but, you know, no offense to the Princeton's big men, but they're just not as strong either. Burke Halter and Greg Johnson back in for the Vikings. The aforementioned Greg Johnson has the ball up high on the left. Khalil da Davis, top of the key. And now Burkhalter gets a touch as well. Johnson back over for Burkhalter. Trying to penetrate in on Coles. Nowhere to go. and Kicks it out to the baseline. Randall, he pumps, he kicks. Here's a three for Hartman. No good. And the rebound down to McCorkle for Lakota East. 
Thunderhawks down by two with 3.12 left to play here in this first half. Corkle has it. Furman curls and draws. He drew contact from Greg Johnson. Yeah, they're definitely going to get Johnson on a block there. And They'll throw it in. Here's a three off the left wing, left short for Furman. Long outlet to the rack, no good, but going to the free throw line will be Khalil Davis for a couple. That's just what Princeton does, and they do a good job of it, right? I mean, not that I, I don't want to keep bringing that up, but it just seems so obvious as to when Princeton's, when they're when they're well-oiled machine, it's just get the ball out of the basket or get the rebound and push that thing up the floor and draw a foul or lay it in. First free throw for Davis is good. 67.5% shooter at the stripe this year. No good on number two, 21-18. So a one possession ball game with under three to play here in this first half. They'll pick up at half court. Holes penetrates, Ooh. lost the handle, and it's turned over. It's a little bit of an unforced there there, just kind of lost the grip of it and a turnover, but so far what we kind of expected, right? A tightly tightly guarded contest. And I I, I thought Princeton was on to something in the first quarter. They had, you know, 18 with a few minutes left, and you look up at the board and they only got 21 points with a couple minutes left in the half. Well, sometimes, you know, and part of it is necessitated by the need for rest, right? As Hardman has the ball, he pumps 18. He missed a shot. Howard has it. No run out as they'll have to wait. So the need for rest, and that's just normal human fatigue, necessitates changes. And when you have that in different personnel, well, you just don't have the same five on the floor who had that chemistry in the early minutes to drive uh, a run. We saw something similar back in the game uh, back in December as this one is thrown away. So, in thinking about this, right, if you remember that game, Nate Johnson had scored the first two points of that contest, and then Princeton Pack came the other way, running up and down the floor. Before you knew it, they had an 11-0 run. And then, at that point, you realize from East, it's like, hey, we just need to settle down and control the ball and, and play things out, and just fatigue wore out Princeton down the next couple of quarters until they could get to the fourth. Mm. Try to force it in there, and there's one there for, for Randall. Coles has it. Checked by Caleb Crawford. As they pull, play man pressure, three-quarters court. McCorkle back on over for Coles. Under a minute and a half left to play here in this first half, 21-18. Good pass. Coles down on the block, backs in. He cannot shoot around Caleb Crawford, though, and it's turned over. This is where they do well. There it is. Oh, Burkhalter dropping it off for Johnson in a timeout. I like that timeout by, by Clint Atkins just based off the fact that really they came down East Dud and got a really poor shot. And I think more more infuriating than anything for a coach is when you just don't hustle back on defense. And I'm not I'm not per se that that's exactly what happened there, but it's hard for me to believe that there was that easy of an lay in when the ball come down the floor with a two on one. But you know, as you just mentioned, the Vikings obviously East knows what they need to do to try to to, to outmatch Princeton in the standpoint of what kind of game they want to play and it's in the Thunderhawks best interest to turn this into a half court basketball game and you know when you're missing Nate Johnson sometimes that does hurt on the offensive end you don't have a guy you can kind of turn to and just say hey go create your own shot but they got enough guys out there on the floor that if they run offense long enough they're going to get a good look and I think that's what Clint Athens is going to say is that you know there is no shot clock, fellas. We need to run offense and get a better shot, not force something up in the lane. Alex Mangold's back in this ball game. He got a few minutes on the bench. They really need him back as they're trying to stifle the 5-0 the run that the Vikings put on them. 23-18, under a minute to play. The big last minute of basketball right here for momentum purposes. They spread the floor. Here's McCorkle driving, cutting, and lost it, got it back. Coles has it. And we'll bounce it back outside. I think it's almost like they're content to take the last shot. Furman against his exact opposite number. 
in Hardman. Mangold gets a touch. Under a half minute to play here in this first half. You know, it's funny. The, the first half has been fast moving, but it's been plodding, which has been a weird way to pass time. I'd say the first quarter was quick move, and the second quarter took a, took a nosedive. Eight seconds to play. Here's a three for Coles on the corner. He airmails it. Burkholter the rebound. He plays. Here's a jumper at half court. No good for Randall, and this first half has come to a close. Your score at intermission. It's the home team leading the number 10 team in the state as the Vikings lead the Thunderhawks 23-18. This is the game of the week here on Chatterbox Live. It's the game of the week here on Chatterbox Live. Let's give you the scoring here in the first half. First uh, for the visiting Thunderhawks of Lakota East. They got three points in the ball game from Trevor Howard. Two from Jared McCorkle. Five points from Jaden Coles. Two points from Alex Mangold. And a team-high six points from Caden Furman. The Thunderhawks were 8 of 17 shooting from the floor for 47%. 2 of 8 from behind the three-point line at 25%. And believe it or not, they have yet to shoot a free throw or make an attempt at it tonight. For the home team, the Vikings got 10 points from Khalil Davis. That's a game high in this one. Darius Randall has four points. Greg Johnson has five. Two points apiece for Bowen Hardman and Jaheim Thomas. They have 23 points on nine of 18 shooting from the floor. That's 50%. Two of seven from behind the three-point line at 28.5%. And they are three of four at the charity stripe for 75%. As we had mentioned as we come up on the second half, that uh, Lakota East is at the top of the standings. And you heard Trace mention that it may or may not make a difference, uh, the outcome of tonight's game, uh, how they're, they're seated going into the playoffs. But they are 12-1 in conference, 17-2 overall. Oak Hills at 14-5, they are 11-2 in conference. Princeton and Mason are tied uh, for third in the conference at 9-4. and four. Uh, And then you have Hamilton behind them, Lakota West, Fairfield, Sycamore, Middletown, and Coleraine brings up the back end as we come up on this third quarter. So it, it is kind of a nice to see uh, and think about, Trace, how many teams may actually get into these playoffs from the GMC. They've been very competitive all year long. Yeah, it's, a lot of it depends. You know, it's going to sound like the most obvious comment in the world. Just the way it breaks down from a bracket standpoint and who you draw. You know, I think sometimes the GMC fares well because they play against some opponents that they are better than. But then there's times where, you know, a team like uh, Princeton might go up against a team like LaSalle in like the second round or something. And LaSalle barely edges them out. And that's uh, one of the GCL's best playing, you know, a decent team. So we'll see. Best time of the year, in my opinion, and the fact that I uh, that I got some water means I'm a new man up here. <laughs> Away we go here in the second half as the Thunderhawks have it. Mangold now plays to McCorkle, and now Coles dumps it down so low for Furman. He turns, he shoots short, and scores. Good bucket, tough angle. But he found a way to get it to drop. Furman's got eight in the book, 23-20, a half minute gone by here in this third. Davis, did he walk? We turn it over. Well, it'll be interesting to see how Lakota East comes out here in the second half. Clint Adkins has a knack for winning, by the way. Two, count them, two losses in conference over two years. So uh, to play and play well in the GMC has been something else. And this one deflected out of bounds. It'll stay up front. Intended for Trevor Howard on the back door. Ball will be entered in underneath the Princeton hoop. Furman gets a touch. And now McCorkle top of the key. Furman well outside the arc, plays, Coles, penetrates, pops 15, no good. Here comes Princeton back on a rebound by Khalil Davis. Craig Johnson, now outside, Randall, stop and go, pumps three, he knocks it down. 
his first trifecta of the night to make it 26 to 20. Man goal top of the key thought about three. Plays Furman. Mangold can shoot from the outside. The he pass. go inside to him and one! <laughs> Fouled by Burkhalter. Good feed inside to, to Mangold, and he did a good job of keeping his presence and, and using his strength there to finish because they did everything they could to foul him strong enough just so he wouldn't be able to get a shot up, but that wasn't the case, and we'll see if he can't finish it. Alex averaging 10 points a ball game. He does. Five points for Big Al, as his teammates like to call him. There you go. Burke Halter outside the arc. Johnson gets a touch, and now Davis, and they play it down to the corner. Here's a drive off that corner for wow. Randall. He takes it to the rack. Wow. 28-23. Well, he did climb amongst the trees, that's for sure. Just great wherewithal being able to use your body to your advantage. We'll see if he can't answer. This is the answer right here. And Mangold gets two more. I think that they've, they've had a sincere conversation, whether it was a <laughs> halftime or whether it was in a huddle. But they said Alex Mangold needs to catch the ball in the paint a little more. And it's been, a, you can tell, it's been an emphasis. Three's no good. Burkhalter chases it down. And Princeton resets. Drive and a score for Khalil Davis. Just too quick for him is Davis. That was with his right hand. He usually goes left, but give him credit with his offhand right there. 30 to 25. Coming up on five minutes to play here in this third. McCorkle outside the arc puts it on the deck. Furman. Got a good oh, look. here's Howard for a three. No good. A little too short. Davis on the run out. Oh, Behind the back no. dribble to the rack. He goes. Wow. I told you. They, we, we talk all, all year long about, you know, <laughs> how talented they are. There's a perfect example. You can't teach that. That's a shot of the night so far. 32 to 25. Cole stuck out on the, the block and lost the ball out of bounds. You just can't teach that quickness, and you cannot teach those ball handles. That's just spending time in the gym. Whether it's your backyard or whether it's at the local rec center, you've done that move thousands of times to be able to pull that off in a game. Well, we saw Channel 12 out here with a camera crew in the first half. I don't know if they stuck around for the <laughs> second half, but I sure hope they got that one on video. If not, well, we're we'll going to we'll, we'll loan them the tape. Yes. <laughs> that was impressive, man. I tell you, there wasn't too many drives so far this year that uh, – didn't have the razzle dazzle of that one, but just as uh, just as Mangold kind of kept them in the game down here on this end, Princeton's come back and kind of counterpunched with a with a run of their own, and it just seems like the game's in the balance here for the last couple minutes of this period. Johnson to the stripe where he had been 18 of 21 at the line this year, he misses on the first. That's just under 86 percent, which is pretty good. He'll take that. <laughs> He'll get you a paycheck at some upper levels. He gets one of two. 86%. That'll get you in the game at the end no matter how good you are, you know. <laughs> you just get in there and let him foul you. Even me with uh, with a vertical of two pieces I'll, of paper? I'll tell you right now, Jeff, if you shot 95%, you'd be in the, you'd be in the game at the end. Furman misfires. Burke Halter the rebound. Randall will handle across half court. Here's a three for Hardman off the corner. No good. One and done on this trip down the floor. Does Mango with a screen up top. Furman will get it. He eyeballed the three against Burkhalter. Now let's see if he goes place to the, uh, the rim. So he'll try to fill the lane. And they play it outside for Adkins. Adkins now Howard outside on the right. McCorkle puts it on the floor. Drives into the lane and scores. He's impressed me tonight with his ability to get to the rack and finish. He's got four, 33 to 27. A little stop and go for Randall. He kicks it out for Hardman. Now Burkhalter into the lane. He kicks it back out for Johnson. A little stop and go. Back for Burkhalter. Underneath the rack. He goes to the up and under. 
Man, I'll tell you, there's been stretches of this game where it's been sloppy and they can't find a way to put the ball in the basket, and then there's been small stretches where it's just grown man basketball finding ways to put the ball in the hoop. That last se sequence was pretty. Furman has it up high on the left. His team down by eight. A corkle top of the key. Hankin gives it up. He gets it back. Howard gets a touch. Got to give it to him. Yep. Now you work off of him. Angle initially drew the double. Now he'll dribble out. 2.24 left to go here in this third. 35-27. McCorkle again. McCorkle slipped and he's guilty of steps. Yeah, he just kind of got tripped up. Got his feet tangled up there. And once you took the tumble, there's nothing you can do. Travels the right call. And another turnover for East. And you almost just feel like, can East find ways to put the ball in the basket? That's where they've had really a difficult time tonight without Johnson, if you will. Is just can't find any steady stream of, of offense. Well, to accentuate your point, they haven't been fluid tonight. And I think, you know, there's just... I mean, they're running motion, right? And they're, But it seems like they're passing to pass. And here's a drive and a hold underneath. I think they're going to get it Mangold on this one. It will. Unfortunately for East, it will be on the ground. And they're nowhere relatively near the penalty quite yet. you got a couple fouls still to go. And rather have a baseline out of bounds than, a, than an easy lay-in. It's two on Mangold. He's going to create his own shot right here. Randall? Maybe not. Go back out against Adkins. Howard has the defensive assignment now on the ball handler, Greg Johnson. He rolls around a screen, he kicks out, and we've got a foul. They're going to call an offensive foul there. and Could have gone both ways. The hardest call in sports maybe is the block charge. I'm not sure if that was a, was a, was a charge per se, but the men in stripes called it, so we'll agree with it. But... As I usually do, I'll let you know if I, I, I vehemently do, uh, disagree with the, with the call. And now one's so-so, you know. You could argue both ways. 35-27. So as soon as we had seen Lakota East show some life, back came, came Princeton. Tell you what, if we got any more people that walk by us with popcorn, you're not going to hear me for another five <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Here's McCorkle with the ball. I almost offered that girl $20 for it. I bet you did. <laughs> <laughs> Furman has it up on the right. I, I don't think they're playing for a last shot, but the way they're passing the ball, it seems like they are. Here's Adkins in traffic. It kicks it back out to Furman. Now reposting Adkins low on the right. He'll dribble out. Yeah, just not like you said, there's no fluidity right now. There's just not very good spacing for the guys in Guys in black. They play Mangle. He draws Good a defense. double. Feed it underneath. McCorkle. No good. Hung on the rim and the rebound. It goes to Jaheim Thomas. Thomas will dribble out low on the right. And do we have a timeout? I think we do. 35.2 seconds left to play here in this third. And as we continue to mention... No fluidity. I think part of it is when you think about this, it's not just the magnitude of the scorer who's out of the ball game for Lakota East. It's the fact that Nate Johnson's a primary ball handler on this team, especially coming up the court to set up a half-court offense. Yeah, I think just a lot of what they do runs through him, and he's very important for them. Not just the fact that, you know, whenever you compare people, I'm always hesitant to do that because it almost seems like you're trying to slight the other player, and I don't mean that by any means, but... So, for instance, like a guy like Julian Mackey, he's an incredible scorer, an incredible ball player. But if you had to put it up against me, who's more valuable to their team and what they do? It's going to be Johnson just based off the fact of all the things that he does. Mackey can score the basketball, but there's other guys on the team like Carter Combs that, that Wes can rely on to maybe get some of that scoring back. I just don't see that in East. And that's maybe the biggest fear that I have for this bunch is that if you rely a lot on one guy and he comes out and he, let's say he is healthy in the tournament and he, and he just doesn't play well, eh, you might find yourself in a, in, a, in a tight ball game than when you're not supposed to be in one. So there's Hardman. Shots no good. And now we'll see if Lakota East will play for a final shot. But you, mentioned, you, know, you mentioned Carter Combs, by the way, and he yeah. just set uh, a school record for points in a game. He I did. think he had eight trays in that game last week. It's an impressive, impressive scoring night for sure. And I 
Here's Coles. He pumps from 10. That shot's no good. He drew the contact with 2.2 left to play here in this third. Yeah, it's a... Uh, if they can hit both of these free throws here, you'd almost just feel like there's a little momentum back in the building here for, for East. And one thing that uh, I've seen Combs be able to do here is he, he takes a delayed time to shoot the basketball. It's almost like a... I don't want to call it a double clutch because that's probably the wrong term. But most guys go up and they're shooting the basketball almost as they're going up. He almost shoots it almost right before he comes down. And sometimes as a defender, that can throw you off and you do foul him. Coles. There he gets them both. both. Got to do a little bit of pressure here, so force a half-court shot, and there you go. At the buzzer is no good, and this third period has come to an end. A six-point lead for the Vikings, 35-29. to This is the game of the week here on Chatterbox Live. Thirty-five twenty-nine in favor of Princeton over the top dog in the GMC Lakota East. Along with Trace Fowler, I'm Jeff Kim. Thanks for joining us here on Chatterbox Live, the game of the week. Here in the penultimate week of the season, week 11. And I don't want to say a conference title is coming down to the wire, but the way Lakota East has played tonight without a lot of fluidity, uh, it might be the case here. All I know is Oak Hills is uh, <laughs> hoping for Princeton right now as we speak. Jamal Walker's the ball handler. Isolation. Randall has it. Puts it on the floor. Lost a handle and gives it up. Here's Thomas in the lane. He puts up no good. He drew the foul and that's going to be three on Mangold. It almost felt like that we talked there during the break that they needed to find a way east, I'm talking about, <laughs> to get a couple quick baskets just to kind of feel like they got right into this thing. Princeton almost feels like they're a 5-0, 5-0 run away from just putting this thing in the bag. Well, maybe there is something to that home cooking that you had mentioned at the top of our broadcast. Well, it's the depth perception. <laughs> Eight point lead. <laughs> Something to it, I guess. I don't think it has anything to do with Nate Johnson or how good they are. Or <laughs> none of that. Here's Coles. He pumps 10 feet away. Big fan of Coles. Big fan of Coles, man. Just a sophomore. Finds a way to get his own shots. I like him. He's got nine in the book. 37 31. They're staying alive in this one. Staying alive is a good turn. And they're only down six, and it feels like 12 almost. Well, and that's because we've just not been fluid at all, and here's a steal. Here they go. Coles up ahead. Furman that's to the rack. Charge. Oh, my. Ay, ay, ay. Well. Yeah. I plead the fifth on that one. <laughs> I plead the fifth on that one. You can go back and watch it and look it from your own yeah, eyes. Decide for yourself. That's right. The score remains the same, 37-31. Jamal Walker has the ball. By the way, back in the end of the 80s and into the early 90s, the Xavier Musketeers had a player named Jamal Walker. That they did. Uh, and uh, I can still hear... A play-by-play -play voice in my head. They used to call him Jumpin' Jamal. Uh, and I'm trying to remember. Andy McWilliams was then the play-by-play -play guy. End of the 80s. You weren't on the planet here at that point. <laughs> Walker has his shot blocked. Mango got a piece of it. And now sits a high screen. He's the wall again. You got to watch out for that. We've seen some injuries already with those high screens. <laughs> He was talking some stuff down to Walker. Now, the good news for Walker is he stayed upright. Here's a high-low and a score for Furman. And a timeout. So Just here like comes that. East. Just like that. Here they come. A timeout with 5.50 left to play in this ball game. A four-point contest, 37-33. to And they've seen some life. And sometimes it does start off defensively. And sometimes it's a block shot like we saw in the last sequence. 
or sometimes it's a hard screen that pushes a player off his born. Yeah, I, I, a lot of times good offense comes off of the defensive end more than not. But you're talking about some Xavier guys and walkers. There's a guy by the name of Tyrese Walker. I mm. don't know if that jumps out to you, but that's a uh, Hamilton alum of all of all places. And brought me back to, to the idea of... of uh, how fortunate we are in Cincinnati and even, let's just call it the Miami Valley slash Cincinnati, Southwest Ohio. We'll start there. And how great we have it with basketball in general. Not only do we do have good high school hoops, but the college ranks right now, whether it be Xavier coming on strong here towards the end, UC is playing well. They're at the top of their conference. And then you have a team up in UD Arena who just happens <laughs> to be a national a national brand at this point and they they have a chance to make a long tournament run but how many states if you will or even areas have three teams that would probably make the tournament and good high school basketball all in what a 30 mile radius it's amazing it's amazing speaking of those flyers they may even have the national player of the year and i don't want to leave them out because alex gray is an alum and they should be proud the norse mm -hmm. have made the tournament a few times Well, I have a problem rooting for them, and I'll tell you in just a second here. Khalil <laughs> Davis has the ball. He drives. He kicks. That's and before that can do that, charge. So I can't root for the Norse, and here's the easy reason why. Let's hear it. I'm a Wright State University alum, and yep. they play in the same horizon. That league. they do. That they do. I do remember when I was going to school up in Dayton. At that point, Wright State basketball was actually, a, a, I would say, better, you know, <laughs> than UD was, uh, Dayton Flyers. <laughs> they, they, they were making the tournament, and the Flyers were not. And um, it was an eerie situation up there in Dayton when you have 13,000 trying to pack UD Arena. Right. And you have Wright State, no offense to them, but they'd have some struggles filling up that Nutter Center from time to time. But kudos to, to, the, to, the, to the staff there. And he ended up leaving, right? Uh, you, you're going to know his name better than I. I uh, Give me a second here as... We had some contact down the block. I thought the ball had been pulled un out of bounds, but we do have a foul. Yeah, they're going to have a hold there on Mangold, so he's not going to go to the line, but we do creep a little bit closer to the bonus as that is the So it's been a while foul. since I've done a Wright State game. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, I used to broadcast some Wright State basketball games on television. Um, but I, did, I broadcasted those games in the Ed Schilling, Paul B. and Cardi era. If you know if you know who those guys are, Ed Schilling had been a head, head assistant uh, for the man who still coaches the University of Kentucky. There you go, John Calipari. And then, uh, Ed, uh, I beg your pardon, uh, Paul. Paul had been a, a top assistant for Jim O'Brien, who at that point was the head coach of the Ohio State University. I believe you're talking about the era be behind that. That is true. East has run great offense and. Just missed a lay in there, but they had run some good offense there and looked promising. We'll see if Princeton can answer. Here's a stop and go. Here's a shot on the run. Gotta no good, but board. they'll play it up front. Here's a three ball off the corner. No good for Davis. Here's the run out. Furman down the lane, and he lost the handle. He drew the contact. I think they're going to call that on the ground, I would suspect. And it looks like it's going to be on Jamal Walker. Walker's out there trying to plead his case out at the top of the key. 4.07 left to play in regulation, and all of a sudden this one has tightened up just a little bit. Very tight. By the way, the head coach that you're thinking about that you had seen is, I believe, the head coach over at Clemson. Yep, that's it. I, I couldn't come up with it. That is who it is. Nice bucket. Here we go, Jeff. We talked about this thing being sloppy for quite some time, and I told you, if this thing's a two-point game with about three minutes left, you can throw out all the window. We're going to have ourselves a fun basketball game as the crowd starts to get into it. Furman has 12. Randall has it. He'll back out on the dribble against McCorkle. Now tries to penetrate. Does. In the lane. Goes to the right-hand scoop. Missed the shot. It's batted out of bounds and it's last touched by East. That's uh, two possessions for East there where they... They had gotten the stop, and then they'd given up a rebound to give them another chance. They got bailed out because, you know, Davis had a wide-open three there in the corner, and he were able to miss it, but got to come down with defensive rebounds in these parts of the game. Johnson plays. Khalil Davis up high on the right. 
Checked by Furman. Returns it. Randall, top of the key. Gets the high screen. Now drew the double momentarily. Pumps from the elbow. 12 footer, no good. Good boxing out by East. Here and we go. East has a chance to tie it up or go ahead with a three with 317 left to play. Mangold sets the high screen. Got Mangold outside. There's Coles. Back to Mangold. Thought about three for a second. Coles. Pumps into the lane. Goes to the rack. Missed the shot. Davis the rebound for Princeton. That's a block. And it's a blocking call on McCorkle as he was trying to get in the way of Randall coming up front. Well, if you're Princeton, you know... The game hasn't gone the way you'd like it to here in the second half. It's really been a lot of half-court style of basketball. And right there, they were trying to get a run out, and the block really negated that. And here, we're right back to half-court basketball. We'll see if they can't find a way to get a good shot. Everything's just been really one-on-one -on -one for the most part down here for them. Feels like we're in the schoolyard. Here's Burkhalter, the charge. runner, no good, yep. and a charge. Absolutely, player control foul. Sometimes you got to know when to use the, utilize the jump stop, and you can't you can't elevate whether you're going to pass or shoot. You can't elevate when you got a man right underneath you, especially as we'd already said before that. Hey, you want to talk about growing root in the lane? I didn't pick up who actually took the charge there. Maybe you did, but my man was there for a good four seconds before that actually occurred. So a good call, and here comes East again with a chance to tie or take the lead. Or Corkle comes out. Nathan Atkins, as you see in the picture, comes in. Coles has it. Off a high screen by Atkins. Rolls in the lane. Drew the double. Nice turnaround. He ties it up. Some old schoolyard basketball right there. The old fake pump fake. Some people will call it the Rondo. We're tied at 37. Our third tie of the ball game. Here's a drive. It's blocked off the rim, but some contact by Mangold, and he might be done. I think they're going to put it on Mangold, so waiting to see if they're going to say that's his fifth. But one thing that I, I, I uh, Davis was really close to the baseline right there. I don't know if he stepped out or not, but he had to be inches away from stepping out if he didn't. Ooh. Couldn't get the English on that one. Khalil Davis is a 67.5% shooter. It's like they only have three fouls on Mangold. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe perhaps they signaled one wrong earlier in the game. Nonetheless, there's another big offensive rebound for the Vikings. My goodness, that's three of them here late. Against a 2-3 zone, the drive, and the ball will head the other way. Randall had it, lost the handle, and then when he got it back, he had nowhere to give it out. Yeah, just kind of like you said, a little too late once the time once the time he lost the handle or regained it, I should say. But again, Princeton's just not running a whole lot of offensive sets on the uh, half-court offense. We'll see if East can't continue to get easy baskets inside. Furman throws near side. Trevor Howard has yet to put it on the floor. And that's, a hold down on the near that's side. That's going to send Howard to the line. So Randall picks up the personal. Well, at this point, we're just kind of done guessing how many fouls are on some of these players. They have Mangold with his fourth. So there's okay. a chance. That's how I mentioned earlier. There's a chance, obviously, you signal in, and then and then you, you, you got it wrong, and perhaps we've seen it. And We're obviously not the official score table, and that's a big free throw by Howard. Trevor gets that first one. He has broken the tie. He has given East the lead as he gets his fifth point of the night. Buckle up, Jeff. <laughs> well, this is what we've been waiting for all night long. Davis has it up high on the left. Jab step. Again with the jab step. Now puts it on the deck. Ooh. Nice move. Wrap around pass for Burkhalter, and it will stay up front. Ooh. It was batted out of his hands, and McCorkle might have been the last to touch it. Well, nonetheless, you got to play defense. Can't worry about the call now. 
Here's a long three. Oh, no good for Davis. You got to suggest hey, you don't have to foul, do you? Oh, they turned this it over. This one's turned over. Here's Randall to the rack. And scores. Tying it up at 39. I think you need to look up. Yep, you got a guy down. Adkins scores on the other end. They left him <laughs> all alone in a timeout. With 48.3 left to go here in regulation. 41 to 39. Back comes East. Wow. Well, we were a little concerned how lackluster this game with this kind of marquee had at halftime and even deep into the third quarter. That's no longer the case. No. <laughs> no. No, that second quarter came around and uh, yeah, it was it was a little tough. There was some there was some we'll call it just some offensive woes there in the second quarter they weren't able to find their stride but my goodness we had said at the very beginning of, of halftime that if this thing got down in that three four point range with about a minute and a half two minutes left you throw all that throw all that out the window if you're the vikings though you have got to find a way to get a good shot when you're running half court offense you got guys out there that can create their own shot. I'm not arguing that. There's Darius Randall and Cleo Davis can get a shot on almost anybody in the city. But there's a difference between getting a good shot and creating your own shot. And in my opinion, if they could either utilize a screen action for, for uh, Randall, I would utilize a screen action for Randall, let him get one-on-one -on -one to get to the lane. And then you got a guy like Hardman, put him in a corner to where Randall can kick it out to Hardman for a wide open three. Here we go. Here's Randall with the ball. He'll be met at half court by McCorkle. We'll see how much they wind down the clock. Or if they'll attack the hoop for a bucket and play some defense. Again, a little two one on one for me. Here's a three off the corner. He knocked it down. Davis. What a basketball game for Davis. Timeout with 27.9 to go, and the lead changes once more. Mercy. If you remember at the bat beginning of the ball game, we had four lead changes and about as fast as you and I could blink. And then we had nothing pretty much for the rest of the way. We had some tie ball games, and now down the stretch, we're seeing bucket for bucket on each side. Absolutely. It's basically just been a heavyweight bout here at the end. Bout, punch, counter punch, and no one's been able to deliver the knockout quite yet. But it's a situation where we have to ask ourselves, if you're East, do you want to take this thing down to the very end and take the last shot to try to win it? Or do you want to try to just get the first good quality look and take a chance on Princeton having the ability to take a, take a shot and win it? I'm of the mindset, and I think Glenn Atkins will be as well, where you want to go with the first quality shot. You gotta give this, give yourself a chance to, to win the basketball game, even if you miss a shot down here, right? You don't wanna just run this thing down to where if you do miss just one shot, the game's over. I think I expect him to do one of two things. Get Coles an opportunity to utilize his ability with his pump fake inside like a one-on-one -on -one action, or you have to go to the guy down low who is a force in Alex Van Gold. We'll see what they decide to do. These are the situations where you start to ask yourself, when do you miss a guy like Nate Johnson? It's a kind of moments like this, but they've done a hell of a job here in the second half of with or without Nate Johnson to get himself in this basketball game. We see full court pressure on the outset, and Alex Mangold is back in the ball game, and another timeout. It's like uh, chess now, you yes. know, right? You need a little bit of chess. You want to see what they line up in, and then you take your timeout to, to, to adjust um, into a different set. We've talked about it time and time again sometimes as well is the rebounding in situations like this is almost just as important, you know? I mean, yes, you can get a stop, but getting that pivotal defensive rebound is just as important, and what a basketball game. I want to make mention while we have some time, it'll be a cross-conference matchup tomorrow as Ross visits Baden. The game is sold out, but you can watch it right here on Chatterbox Live. Reed Mouse and our, my main man, Trace Fowler, will have the call. Tip-off is set for 7.30 
tomorrow night. So I hope you get as good a one as we've gotten here, well, at least in what. the last eight minutes. I'm on a hell of a run, and I'm uh, sign me up for it, man. I'm a. Uh, I tell you, I don't know if it's just the fact that I've been blessed to, to be able to call a lot of these, or if it's just maybe good luck on Chatterbox Sports coming and you're going to get a good game. I don't know, but this this is going to be one hell of a finish. 42 to 41. And I do want to make quick mention, our clock, even though it is picture-in-picture, picture, isn't exactly perfect. So don't wait running and uh, running <laughs> trusting that 100%. It is close, but it's not exact. Coles throws in to Howard, and here we go. Herman will take it across half court, 20 to play. Coles up high on the left. Plays Mangold. Ten seconds left. They're playing for a final shot. Here we go. Here's Furman. Lost it. Got it back. He pumps 18. Oh, he got it. With two seconds it. left to go. He got it. Wow. Ice water in the veins. We've got a timeout. 43 to 42 with 1.2. Actually, they'll reset the clock to two seconds. Wow. Well, I can promise you this. They didn't draw it up. <laughs> that is not what you draw up in the huddle, but sometimes the improv works out. And you want to talk about a big shot in games that matter. In order to win GMC championships, these are the situations you look back on at the end of the year and you say, you know what? We had to have it to win. You beat a Hamilton team 34-32. You escape that. You come in tonight without maybe, without question, your best player. I'm not even going to act like he's not. Right. You come in tonight without your best player and you find a way to come into an environment that's not over yet to possibly beat a team who's not lost here all year long. The jumper by Caden Furman. He's got 14 points on the night. The biggest bucket of the night, 43 to 42. We've got officially two seconds on the clock. We're coming right down to the proverbial wire once again. The ball will be triggered in by Khalil Davis. Everybody is up and at him in another timeout. Wow. So gives us a, a, a minute to catch our breath here for one and two maybe just discuss what you could possibly do in two seconds you can get a shot off right you don't have to you don't have to tip it in or anything like you have two seconds is plenty of time it's either one of two things you throw the, the, the everybody knows the Hail Mary pass like a Christian Leitner type thing or you're gonna run which is non-traditional which I said again at the Ross game you can try to run a play, a, 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 I call it a play action, but an off-ball screen down here towards the, towards the near basket to where you almost set the defense up to try to draw a foul, as sad as that is. But if you have a guy on the ball, it looks like they have Davis down there on the baseline. Mm -hmm. Davis can basically run the baseline and draw a foul. We'll see what they decide to do. Here we go. Here we go. He's looking long. He's throwing long. It's intercepted, and this game is over. What a finish. East has won it. They have pulled victory from the jaws of defeat. 43 to 42. Wow. There's moments in a basketball scene, a, a, a season that are defining. And the last minute of that game right there was a defining moment for East. And you can help me out here, but the shot that that kid hit under distress with the hand in his face is something he'll never forget the rest of his life. The pull-up jumper from about 15 feet away for Caden Furman. His 13th and 14th points of the night were the biggest of the ball game. 43 to 42, the final in this one. Trace and I will come back and wrap this up. We need a break. We need some lithium. <laughs> it's the game of the week here on Chatterbox Live. We're back to put a wrapper on this game of the week and what a game it was here at uh, Viking Village tonight. Mercy, 43 to 42 the final. East escapes with a one point win over the home team. What a finish again. Again with Trace Fowler, I'm Jeff Kim. Thanks for joining us here on Chatterbox Live. 
I, I'm, a, I'm still a little out of breath on that one. Yeah, speechless to a certain extent. Uh, I, you know, give East all the credit in the world. They came in here without Nate Johnson. They found a way. They, and that's what good teams do, right? They find a way to win. And you got to give all the credit to Princeton as well. They fought back and take their first loss of the year here at home. But for, for East, you know, they started a little bit on the defensive end, right? You had to find stops in order to get back into this thing. They had some offensive struggles for the most part of this game, and then they went on a little bit of a tear. And you could kind of feel the momentum building for the Thunderhawks. And uh, there's just so many moments in this game that you could look back on, but I don't want the Khalil Davis shot in the corner to get lost either in this mm-hmm. thing because mm-hmm. that thing was just as big of a shot. Oh, my goodness. He just, <laughs> for, for Davis's unfortunate part, it just got kind of outmatched, if you will, with the shot there with two seconds left. But what, what, what more can we ask for? Inside, I mean, yes, in fact, inside the last 30 seconds of this ball game, we see, saw two lead changes on dramatic shots. And, I, yeah. I, I, you know, as just a fan who gets to call these games, right, I don't think you can ask for anything more. It's, no. like, it's almost like we owe, we, 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 we need to go pay for tickets to go no. watch these kinds of events. Well, I'm concerned here at some point that uh, we're going to have a run of about, you know, 10, 20-point <laughs> blowouts. Because, as they say, the statistics will always prove themselves out. And I just don't know how in the world we've got on a run that we've gotten, whether it's been... You know, I mean, just think back at our season and what we've had. I mean, we talk about buzzer beater after buzzer beater after buzzer beater. And, you know, we're getting messages, not that there was a bunch, we're getting messages about people wanting us to come to Oak Hills for what could have been perhaps them to win the, to win the league. Right. Because they're looking at the score, and it just seemed as Princeton at, at one point had this game. And you said it. I mean, East snatched, the, snatched victory from the jaws of defeat. Before we get to the stats, I want to make mention of this, right? You lose your best player to sickness. He's out for the game, and he is arguably the biggest difference maker with all due respect to a couple other great guys in this league. Absolutely. Uh, it, you know, it, you know uh, the, our, our favorite scorer you know, over at Lakota West in Julian Mackey and then Trey Robinson over at Hamilton. But absent those guys, it's like as big a difference maker, if not more, is uh, Nate Johnson, and he's not in the game tonight. And you still win without them. It's amazing, man. It's amazing. I mean, it's just a, it's an incredible team effort that they had. And I'll let you wrap up the scoring and put a wrapper to it. But uh, for, for me, it's, uh, you know, as I get ready to go down into the locker room and do a couple interviews, you get into a locker room like that and you miss playing sports. Because <laughs> you want to talk about a lively atmosphere that they're going to have in there. Absolutely. It won't get much better than that. And that bus ride back to, back to uh, Westchester, or Liberty Township, I should say, um, will be a heck of a lot of fun even though it's only about 10 minutes here's the scoring in this ball game first for lakota east uh, trevor howard got five points four points for jared mccorkle 11 for Jaden cole seven points for alex mangold 14 for Caden Furman. he had the game winning bucket and two for nathan adkins as your 43 points on 18 of 33 shooting that's 54 and a half percent from the behind the three-point line lakota east was two of 10 for 20 percent and at the charity stripe, five for five, and that's a difference maker there too for East. For the home team, the Princeton Vikings, they got a game high 17 from Khalil Davis, 11 points from Darius Randall, six points from Greg Johnson, two points from Bowen Hardman and Sterling Ball Carlter, and four points from Jaheem Thomas. Their 42 points were built upon 16 of 35 shooting for 45 and a half percent, four of 15 from behind the three point line at 27 percent and six of ten at the charity stripe for 60 percent so we're about ready to put a wrapper on this as uh, princeton falls to a record of 15 beg your pardon 14 and 6 9 and 5 in the conference whereas lakota east they raised their record to 18 and 2 13 and 1 in the gmc well in command of that top spot and uh you would expect no less from the 10th ranked team in the state of ohio going into the playoffs what a finish tonight and it bears mentioning as we put a wrapper to this one that it'll be a cross conference matchup as ross visits baden the game is sold out but you can watch the game right here green mouse and trace fowler will have the call tip off on chair box live set for 7 30 